move this mic closer. I forgot how to do everything. It's been so long since I have felt like a human being. Legit, before I started filming, there was a spider hanging down from my camera. It was like a little tiny cute one, but it was definitely like a spider hanging down. I was like, I feel like I could have went on my camera. It would have been like dust. <laughs> um, it's been a while. Hey. Uh, okay, so I know you guys have been waiting for this for a while. For those of you who have been following along, who have been here for six years, five years, eight years, thank you. <laughs> it's been amazing to have you guys. And holy titties. Okay, so this bra is awesome. This is not for this bra, but I'll link it for you guys below. It's awesome for all the things breastfeeding, pumping, whatever. So my birth plan is, was, is and was just a plan, right? And I did air quotes around it because I knew from hearing from other people that your birth plan is just there so that you have an idea of what you want and you're knowledgeable about the things that you want, but it can go completely haywire and not be what you want it to be at all. So it's interesting because I kind of thought, okay, I'm sure there'll be some things that I need to like change or adjust to and be open to, but I did not expect what happened to happen. And I definitely feel like my whole birth plan, me and my partners got my partners, my husband, I never say partner. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> um, my husband's birth plan just got completely flipped on its head, thrown out the window, like just totally got completely reversed, flipped upside down. Like what's that Missy Elliott song? That pretty much it was nothing that I wanted it to be, but everything that I needed it to be and that Harlow needed it to be for what it was and what happened. So basically my birth plan, um, if you want to watch my birth plan video to see how much it's changed, pause this, open a new tab. I'll link it for you guys down below. You can check that out if you don't know, but just all in all, it, in, a, in a nutshell, I wanted to have an all natural birth. I paid uh, $6,500 to give birth at a birth center in San Diego called Tourmaline. Um, I really liked all the midwives there. I, you know, Nick finally felt comfortable, um, with a lot of the questions that he asked and the answers that they had to give birth there. So, cause I wanted to give birth at home initially. So we kind of met in the middle, decided on that. So I paid a good amount of money to give birth there and I didn't actually start care there until I was 32 weeks. So, um, we started going there and it was just, the plan to have an unmedicated birth. I wanted to have a water birth. Um, I just thought it would be easier on everything down there. And so that was the plan. Basically. Um, I didn't want an epidural. I didn't want any medicine. I just wanted to do it naturally. So, <clears throat> um, I ended up being in labor for four days. Uh, it was so brutal. Um, I, right when we thought, it was go time and it was time to go down to the birth center because they typically only keep you there for like four hours after your birth, I believe it is, um, or the birth of your child. So it's not like a hospital where they keep you there for, you know, two days or three days, depending on what you're going through. Okay, so today might be the day. Um, I woke up around 5.30 and had like three contractions that I thought were just like period cramps or something. And then on the third one, I finally decided to open my app and track to see like where it was at. And this is kind of like a little thing of it. You can see um, how far apart they were here and then how long they lasted. All right, we'll check in with you guys in a little bit and see what's going on. So right when we thought they were getting super consistent and like getting down like four minutes apart and stuff, I would just randomly not have one for eight minutes or nine minutes or 10 minutes or seven minutes. And it just was all over the place. It is 6.52. <clears throat> Contractions have been back kind of consistently for about the past two hours. Um, I did just take a Tylenol. <laughs> They're a little bit worse than they were this morning. Um, Tylenol is probably really not gonna do much, but maybe it'll take the edge off. I'm trying to like cook um, dinner right now. Nick and I are cooking tacos. So I'm trying to like keep myself busy, but I basically, have to bend over on the counter and stop when I'm having one. So, um, yeah, um, I'm guessing these are going to get worse and that is a little terrifying because these are pretty painful. 
Um, so yeah, it's definitely like a pretty gnarly period cramp, which I had a little dose of when I was like 17. I used to get cramps so bad that I'd be on the bathroom floor, curled up in a ball in the dark. Just, okay, here another one comes. So I'm going to, I would say they're about eight minutes apart right now, seven minutes apart. Okay, I'm gonna get off here. I guess this is actually, you know, you guys can just see it all. Why not? I'm just gonna set you on that for a second. Also, I've gone to the bathroom like seven times today, like number two, because it's like so relieving. Like it's almost like, um, it's almost like, like, uh, period diarrhea, you know? Um, but it's really irritating my little friend down there. So I bought some witch hazel pads that are going to be here tomorrow. In between, it's totally fine. And some are worse than others, which is kind of weird too. Like that one wasn't as bad as the one before. And I feel like I have to pee, like. It's 7.50, I either just peed on the ground or my water just broke. So I just swabbed what was on the ground and this is like blue. So my water just broke and I sat on the toilet for a second and um, my mucus plug just like finished coming out or like continued coming out. It was different than yesterday. So it's definitely like, that's definitely what it is. <laughs> so my water broke and um, one of the midwives, even though they, I'm like, we're like 10 miles outside of the radius of where they visit for tourmaline since they're all the way in PB and we are about 45 minutes away from that, um, came to see me to see like how everything was going. And um, unfortunately we didn't really get the information about the fact that I would not be able to give birth at the birth center anymore um, if my water had been broken for 48 hours until about the 36 hour mark when she visited. And Nick was kind of like, okay, so what does this look like for us then? And I was just in so much pain. I was like in my bedroom in the dark, like just trying to get through this because my contractions were so gnarly that I would literally have to like grip a table and like, I could, I've never, I've never been sicker to be honest with you. I've never um, experienced worse pain than that. It is 3.50 AM, I am exhausted. <laughs> I have moved out to the living room. <sighs> the only thing that is like helping these to be bearable right now is to kind of stand up and rock side to side when they're going on. Um, I thought I was ho really hoping I could like sleep through these until tomorrow, but there is no way in, in hell I can sleep through these. They're hard. And so, and I just kind of thought labor didn't last four days. I thought like when you were in labor, it lasted maybe like a day, maybe two, and then you had your baby. No, that was not the case. So I'll get into what happened, but if what happened hadn't happened, I don't know how long I would have been in freaking labor. Um, so she finally tells us, well, you can't give birth at the birth center after 48 hours. And at that point, um, I really wish I had been given some information either by my doula or my um, midwife that was there or the birth center in general, maybe before this point, like maybe prior to just so that we could have another plan B in our heads. And maybe this is dumb. And like a lot of you that have had kids before, maybe think that this is like common sense or something, but I assure you it's not, I'm not dumb. And I did not know this. I did not know that there was a higher risk for infection for myself and my baby after my water broke, like the more time that passes. I didn't know that. I am very disappointed that I wasn't given that information by anyone, um, especially my medical care professionals, which were the midwives. So I was really like looking back hindsight, I'm really disappointed that I wasn't given that information. Um, I should have been provided the information immediately because the whole point for me of giving birth at a birth center was to have a safer experience for me and my child. That was literally my number one 
reason and the experience overall. So I was just super disappointed that I wasn't given that information because I had, if, if I had had that information, I would have gone to the hospital like 10 hours after my water broke if it wasn't progressing. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't, I wouldn't have taken that chance. So I ended up at the end of it, which I'll get to. Um, I didn't give birth to her till I had, my water had been broken for 60 hours. Um, and it caused something else to happen, I believe. And I'll get to that when I get to it. Um, but so anyways, she takes off and then the next day we're like, I'm still in labor. All of my contractions are erratic. It was just night after night of me. I hadn't eaten for four days. I hadn't slept for four days. Just imagine like the most excruciating contraction pain, um, every four to six minutes, 24 hours or like, I guess four days, whatever, I'm horrible at math, is that 96 hours? Um, straight, just every four to six, 10 minutes, you have like a contraction where you have to double over, grab the table and yell and moan out in pain. And I'm not saying any of this to like scare any of you. It's just really real life and what happened. So that's why I'm sharing it. So, and it is a possibility that it could happen to you. So you should be aware. Um, cause I didn't know that. I didn't know labor could last so long. So the next morning I had been in labor now for, or my water had been broken for 48 hours. This is day four of labor. Um, it has been pretty fucking brutal. Uh, I haven't slept in three days. I'm exhausted. And uh, one of the midwives came over last night and did a vaginal exam and I'm literally only like two centimeters, which I can't even believe considering all the pain that I've been through with contractions for three days straight. We're going to the hospital and I'm going to most likely get an epidural and try and take a nap and then wake up and have her. I'm getting a contraction right now, so I have to go, but that's kind of where we're at. Thanks for taking care of me. You're amazing. Let's do what I can. I'm a trooper. <sighs> I had to go to the hospital. I didn't have a choice. I was no longer allowed to give birth at the birth center. Um, and I will also say another piece of information that I was not given, um, that I, I wasn't given this by anyone, not my doula, not my midwives. Um, so I unfortunately, I'm very disappointed I didn't get this information either. And this may seem like common sense as well, but I figured if it was an issue, somebody would have said something to me. Um, you know, that's why you're in the care of these people that know what they're doing because I don't. So I was getting in and out of my jacuzzi this entire time while my water had been broken. And I didn't know that you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to get in the bath or submerge like your lower body in water at all after your water had broken. I did not know that. So I had been getting in and out of the jacuzzi because that kind of seemed to be the only thing that kind of took the like the littlest edge off of those contractions. So um, anyways, if you watch my Instagram story, you probably remember me posting a little bit here and there. Like I, I just was dead to the world, honestly. Like Nick was like, I've never seen you so sick. He's like, I even offered you curly fries from Jack in the Box and you said no. And I, I right then and there, I knew that you were like, feeling absolutely awful. I So by this time the next morning, my water had been broken for 48 hours. I hadn't eaten or slept or hardly drank anything in the past four days. I was exhausted. So I said, I woke him up in, in the morning. And I said, we have to go to the hospital. I cannot do this anymore. I cannot be in labor anymore. I'm in so much pain. I haven't eaten. I haven't slept. I I'm done. Like if they have to do a C-section to get this baby out of me, like I need to get, we need to get this over with. Like I, I can't do this anymore. Um, so we went to the hospital, they checked me in and I was literally like leaning on the walls. Like I just looked so ill. Like I wasn't, I did not look good. It was, <laughs> I looked like I was in a lot of pain and had been that way for a while. So I, um, luckily the charge nurse there that was taking care of me with like, and that welcomed us in was like so awesome. And I said, you know what, um, when can I have an epidural? Like I need one and I, I talked to her about it too. And she said, you know, nothing that you are receiving from the epidural even touches the baby. And she reassured me of that. And that was kind of like the opposite of everything that I had heard before. And at that point, I honestly was like, you know what, 
whatever needs to happen to get this baby out of me safely um, and to give me the strength to do this, like, because I, I was so exhausted, um, then give it to me. So, and I also had acid reflux, like, really bad. Like, I was having, like, I just, like, laying down. Like, I couldn't even, like, relax. So they were like, well, your blood platelet count is really low. Um, we're going to test it again in a few minutes and see if we can give you an epidural because you may not be able to have one if your count is too low. And I was like, excuse me, say what again? Because um, I've heard that Pitocin and stuff makes your contractions even worse. And I can't even imagine contractions that were worse than what I had been feeling. So, um, but they said the anesthesiologist that's on staff today, if anyone's going to do it, he would. Like, he's amazing. So I was like, yes. So, um, I got the results back from my platelet count and we were good to go. So, um, he came in, he did the epidural. It made my leg like shake all weird. Felt like it was being like, you know, like when you used to lick the batteries, those fat batteries, and it would give your tongue like a zing. I felt like a gnarly zing like that down my leg. And that was unexpected. Um, but once he put that in, um, I was able to like relax and so that was in and then they put a catheter in and I have to tell you like the catheter was my favorite part I think the fact that I didn't have to like feel the urge to pee or get up because I will give you a little TMI I had gnarly hemorrhoids the past like month of my pregnancy and I still have them right now and shitting is terrifying still I haven't pooped for two days and I don't want to like it's awful um it feels like I'm shitting glass so and that's with all the stool softener, stool softener tea. I mean, I'm drinking prune juice, like nothing's working guys. So just I, whatever tips you have, please leave them below. I'll see if I can find anything there that I haven't tried, but I've tried everything. Um, so they put the catheter in and I was like, this is amazing. Like, I don't feel like I have to pee. So I was able to get a really great nap. Well, <clears throat> I have been violated so many times today, but I actually am feeling so much better. I'm exhausted. I have so many things attached to me. I have a catheter in my pee hole. Um, there's something really raw about spreading your legs wide open when you have- Wait, what are you saying, babe? Don't drink this? You're pulling it. <laughs> That's my Don't pee. drink it? Dude, look how much pee came out. I was gonna take a sip. It looks really delicious. <laughs> Ew. But I literally can't feel any contractions. And the only thing that's irritating me right now is this acid reflux and I can live with that. So I feel a million times better. So they're gonna let us nap for about two hours and see how labor progresses. Apparently I'm about three centimeters. Oh, acid reflux. Oh, everybody's doing good though. Baby's doing good. Um, everything's looking good. The first thing the doctor said to me when she walked in though was, oh, it's like a big baby. I'm so sick of hearing that. He's changing my name on the name board. There, she's not gonna be happy about that. Christron? Christron. Oh my God. Even though a uh, single day mile passed, we still brought Harlow her little hat, so. And they said, we're gonna see where you're at at the end of the day. And when I had arrived at the hospital, only at two centimeters. And my heart just like sank when I heard that. I heard this before I got the, um, uh, whatchamacallit in my back. So I uh, was just like, what the hell? So I napped and I rested and it was like, so nice. I, my body was just so weak and like over it. So later that evening they came in and they checked me again and I was only three centimeters. And with the epidural, I could still feel contractions, but they didn't hurt. It just felt like pre like I could feel it. Like I could feel the pressure. And so I kept switching sides and turning over cause your epidural apparently will like all drain to one side and then you'll be able to feel on one side. So you really have to make sure you're kind of getting yourself moved over. And I still had pretty good mobility of my legs, which was really nice. Um, so I, uh, 
they told me at the night, at the end of the night, okay, we're going to start Pitocin now because we need to like get, you know, your water's been broken for over 48 hours now. We need to like get everything moving. So they started me on Pitocin, I want to say around 5 or 6 p.m. that night. And then they said, let us know if you have contractions really close together since I could still kind of feel them. And, um even if it's in the middle of the night, like let us know. And like, I couldn't tell if what I was feeling was like contractions super close together or just pressure from her being in the birth canal. Like I wasn't sure. And honestly, I was so tired that I just ignored it as much as possible because I needed to sleep. Um, I knew I needed to like get my strength to like deliver this baby. So early in what felt like super early in the morning, um, probably around like, gosh, six, 5.45, something like that, they rushed in and flipped on all the lights and poor Nick was sleeping in this like shitty recliner chair next to me. Like I felt so bad for him because I'd kept him up the last few nights just being in freaking agonizing pain. Um, so uh, they came in and said her heart rate and they had this stupid monitor on my stomach that was so uncomfortable. And they're like, okay, so her heart rate has dropped at the last two contractions. Like we need to do this. And so um, I had my water had been broken now for 60 hours or so. And so I was like, all right, let's do this. And I'm still like waking up and, um, you know, I, uh, you have a little button to press if you want more epidural stuff, whatever. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, I'm gonna press this button. If it's blue or whatever, you get to press it. If it's red, you have to wait a little bit. Well, it was fucking blue. So I pressed it. I was like, let's do this. Um, and my whole plan too had been to kind of like let my baby prairie dog, if you will, <laughs> so that I didn't tear and that I could kind of slowly do this and like let my vagina stretch the way it needed to. Um, so I would say, I don't know how long into, it was probably like 10 or 15 minutes into pushing, uh, which was a whole new concept. Um, I was trying to push on my back and she was trying to teach me how to like hold my breath and all this was opposite of what I'd been learning, you know? Okay, ready? All right. So grab behind your legs. You can rest here. Put up my shoulder. Okay. Deep breath in. Curl around baby and pull. Push, 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 push. Harder, 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 harder. Stronger. Um, and so I was like, I don't, it doesn't feel good on my back. And so I was able to go on my side, which felt way more comfortable. Strong, strong, strong. That's it. That's it. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Load away. Another one. Just like that. And go. Go for it. Go for it. Push, 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 push. Yes, yes. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Go, 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 go. Beautiful, mommy. Beautiful. Yes. Good, good. A little more, a little more, a little more. Okay, blow it away. Um, and I was just terrified that like my hemorrhoids were going to like explode. They were so uncomfortable. Um, and I was just embarrassed about it in general. And so that was part of it or part of what I was feeling. And then she like came in and like the doctor came in and like just took a look and everything and said that like another sack had like formed around, like my water had like recreated like a sack to protect the baby. And so she had to cut that. Um, and so she, she cut that and she ended up actually cutting, uh, Harlow's head a little bit, like the top of her head when she came out had like a little abrasion on it. It wasn't bad, but I think it was from that. And so I was like, how did that reform? Like, this is not something I ever even knew could happen. And so, um, when she did that, they noticed that there was meconium in it, which means that Harlow had pooped in the birth canal, which is not unheard of, but it's not a good thing to have happen because then they, it, the baby ingests that and it's in their lungs and they're, it, you know, cause they're breathing amniotic fluid and it goes into their lungs. And so when they're born and the air hits their lungs and they start breathing, their lungs stick together because it's very, very sticky. It's meconium is their first like poop. Um, and it's full of just like amniotic fluid, um, uh, nails, like anything that they ingested in the, in, that's floating around the amniotic fluid, basically. Um, so it's really not a good thing. And so the moment I heard that, I was like, okay, we got to get this baby out. Like there's no prairie dog and there's no fucking fuck my vagina. Like we just have to do this. So I literally, um, like she, uh, the lady, the charge nurse that was helping me push and stuff, she would leave, she left for like 10 minutes or something. And Nick and I were like, I was like, we're going to keep pushing. Let's do this. So Nick was a rock star. He like, um, held my legs up for me and like helped me push. And so we kept pushing while she was out and, um, an hour of pushing, I had pushed her out. Oh, 
She came all the way out and they put her like on my stomach and I was like, okay, maybe the umbilical cord is not long enough because I had heard that like right before and then they grabbed her and took her away and I didn't, I, I, I was just sitting there like, what the fuck is going on? And by this time, my doula had no time to get to the hospital. So we didn't even call her to tell her what was going on because there was she had no time to get there so this would have been a great time to have a doula so that i knew what the hell was going on because i was super scared um i knew that our baby had meconium in her lungs i could hear about 12 people from the NICU team working on her on the other side of the room nick was with me i was like go go with harlow go with harlow um it's gonna make me cry just talking about it so i was just like terrified about what was going on on the other side of the room. I had no idea. Um, and I still had to like birth the placenta and, um, literally the doctor had her entire hand up my vagina, like feeling around for the placenta. Like, I mean, you do what you gotta do, but I was just like dealing with this and getting stitched up. I tore, um, to second, second degree, uh, first degree, there's first degree, second, third, and I think fourth, if I'm not mistaken, and I was a second degree, so it wasn't horrible, but she was stitching me up and I'm like looking over and I just remember like seeing all the NICU team over there like in their comments and hearing like the beeping of stuff and I just didn't know what was going on and I was just terrified. I was like, is she gonna be okay? Like I had no idea what was going on. Um, and then I heard them sometime later, like it felt like a freaking lifetime, um, talking about like her eye shape and her eye color and like how she looked. And I hadn't even seen her yet. I didn't, I had no idea what she looked like. And I didn't even, I didn't even have an opportunity to look at her face or any part of her really. So I was just like, so terrified that she like, wasn't okay. And Nick came over and said, you know, um, we might have to say goodbye for a little while. And I, don't ever say that sentence to someone in a hospital, like giving birth, we might have to say goodbye. No matter what comes after that, don't ever say that to somebody in the hospital. I told him after, I was like, I can't believe you said that to me. Like I was a fucking flipping out. Like it felt like a million years that that sentence was playing on in my head. And he just said for a while, she might have to go to the NICU because of the meconium. And then he went back over to her and she like made a miraculous recovery. Like she went from being basically unresponsive. <sighs> it makes me so upset. Um, to like actually having some color and like, I didn't hear her crying for a little bit, which was terrifying me. Cause I knew Nick said, if you hear her crying, that's a good thing. And so then I heard her crying and I just, I just looked over and I could see her little face in the, um, oh gosh, I should have grabbed tissues. I could see her little face in the, um, little incubator bed thing that they had her in. And I could see Nick standing with her and her little hand was wrapped around his fingers. <laughs> Positive, um, thing was that she turned around like super super fast and um apparently that's not something that happens a lot uh because later that night the you know she ended up being fine and making a recovery and they kept her in the room with us they didn't have to take her um and uh I don't know all of her vitals came back good and she was just she just made a she just turned around um and i guess like later that night when they came in to do some more stuff that one of the same NICU nurses came in and she was like oh my gosh everyone's still talking about her like how she just like turned everything around like that and like we didn't have to take her to the NICU and all that so um they did an awesome job and um and uh yeah it, 
that's basically the labor and delivery portion of the story. I'll kind of leave it there, I guess. There was a lot of other unpleasant things about staying in a hospital that I absolutely hated, but now that I know um, what the deal is, uh, I think I will kn know how to better control the situation. And I have to say that after like experiencing what I experienced through this whole process, um, I don't think I will ever do a birth center again um, for a few different reasons. One being that I don't feel like the care that I received was worth $6,500. Um, and the fact that you're locked into that and if anything, if you go to give birth too early or too late, um, and there's some other factors too, you just like lose your money, you know? And I understand like, why they have that rule in place and stuff. It just sucks because that's a lot of money that I could be using for my daughter now um, that I just handed over for literally a birth class, a couple birth classes and a couple appointments. There are a few appointments there and that's just not worth $6,500. So, um, and you know, I just, uh, that's unfortunate. Can you hear Harlow crying in the background? Um, and then, you know, the money that I spent on our doula, I love our doula, but I don't feel like that was necessarily worth it for us either. And that's not her fault. It's just that the circumstances were what they were and she didn't have any time to get to the hospital. There's just so many moving parts. And I, and based on the fact that I had a four days of excruciating labor, I, d I don't think I want to sign up for that again. Um, you know, it was just, it was a lot. Um, and I was very weak and had that, had it not been for the epidural, I would not have been able to have the strength to deliver Harlow, um, and as quickly as I did. So honestly, um, as much as I didn't want to have an epidural, there is a time and a place. And I've always said that like with medicine, Western medicine in general, there's always a time and a place. Like I like more naturopathic methods and things like that if they work. Um, but if they don't, like, thank God it's there for you if you need it. And so many people have told me, like, I can't believe you didn't have, like, a C-section. Or I can't believe they didn't force you to have a C-section. And honestly, I'm shocked too. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty crazy. My daughter is going to be, it's so weird to say my daughter. Um, she's going to be three weeks old tomorrow. And thank you so much, you guys, for, like, all of the well wishes, all the kind words, all of your just love and everything like I really appreciate it like being a new mom is no fucking joke um so I need to actually go breastfeed her right now so I'm gonna take off so we will see you in the next video guys thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys are having an awesome day bye you're playing your cards with your queen of hearts when everyone folds your